Are we going? It's happening. Hi, it's Seth Rogen here. And I'm Evan Goldberg. This is your audio commentary for This is the end. This is the end. This is the end. Here's the first tidbit. That was my voice. That was Evan Goldberg's voice. Evan has the first line of the entire movie. He yeah. says, Hey, Seth Rogen, man. Do it, man. Do your line. Hey, Seth Rogen. That's not how you do it. But uh, anyway, we feel like we should contextualize this a bit. It's June 7th, 2013. The movie has not yet been released. It comes out in a few days. Uh, we don't know how it will do, so sometimes it's embarrassing because you talk about your movie like it's great and then it doesn't do that well. So we're just going to talk about it as though it's going to be great and everyone's going to love it and it's going to be spectacular. How's that, Evan? I like it. I like this attitude. I like that attitude as well. So we'll uh, refer to all of our choices as though they were good ones. Um, that's Jason Cox, who's our behind-the-scenes DVD guy. Also, just a guy who we knew who had a camera. And this uh, idea that a photographer starts filming me was kind of a last-minute idea, actually. We just yeah, threw yeah, it. yeah. We were hesitant. We almost didn't do it. We thought my saying, "Hey, Seth Rogen," would suffice, but it might just confuse. We realized. Yeah, I'm gonna ask, and I'm just gonna do it on the commentary. Can you turn it down a little tiny bit in our ears? That's a glimpse. That's a that's a commentary into the commentary, <laughs> which is nice saw, for our meta movie. You just saw behind the scenes of a commentary. Sometimes when recording a commentary, you hear the movie too loud in your ears, and you have to ask the engineer to turn it down a little bit. That was commentary commentary. Here's um, a comment on the movie. During this scene, we did a half-hour-long take. Yeah. This is actually the first day of filming. We actually started filming the movie with the first scenes in the movie. The first thing we filmed was me and Jay in the airport, and this was the second thing we filmed. Uh, we're in New Orleans. The whole thing is in New Orleans. Uh, we had a fun time. We fun don't honestly know what gluten is as humans. I actually don't know what gluten is. We, uh, we discussed this on NPR yesterday yeah. with a delightful woman named Terry, and we realized we don't. Jay Baruchel's a huge Montreal Canadiens hat and was very excited that he had the opportunity to wear that hat. And we did have to blur it out in advertisements, but it was worth it for yeah. Jay. This bite is better than the previous bite. Gluten! Man, this looks beautiful. Yeah, do you like it? This I totally redid awesome. it. It's all new. God, Balls are new. Damn, It's son. pretty nice, huh? So this is how the other half lives. <laughs> Come on. Amazing. Air hockey tables. This is a house we used. This, this is kind of like a house I used to have. Some of these photos are photos I took. I got an air hockey table from you, I think, as yeah, a gift yeah. when I first moved It was in. a hit for a while. It was good, the air hockey table. These are actually Jay's favorite things. These are. This is not like something for the film. When Jay, we first filmed, Jay drinks like, what, yeah. 12 Cokes a day? 15,000 And he has like 18 crowns. He eats a lot of Starburst. When we first filmed the scene... Uh, the first few takes, the concept was that I actually didn't have any weed and I didn't have any candy and I hadn't even set up my video games because I, like, wasn't prepared for Jay. And then we thought that felt lame and we decided in the moment to completely change the concept of the scene and make it that I actually had prepared a lot of stuff. So we had our props people who were wonderful put together all the stuff you see on that table. I remember spelling out Jay with those joints. And we improvised this entire scene because we did not write it because we didn't think of it until we filmed it. <laughs> That's movie making. Now here's the first time you hear the Backstreet Boys. And this was in the movie before we ever composed of the Heaven sequence at all. It's true. This was the f we, we just wanted a song that was kind of nostalgic that you thought maybe they listened to when they were 18 years old. That they still love because it's and rad. And they still love it. So it's the Backstreet Boys. And then later on, when we started screening the movie, we realized we needed a sequence in Heaven and everyone loved the Backstreet Boys. So maybe we could get them. Sinkhole in Guatemala. There is a lot of sinkholes in South America. There's a lot of tornadoes in America. America. There's geographical disasters, and people just have to accept that. People just have to accept that in certain areas you're prone to disasters. We're not picking on Latin America. They got they got the sinkholes. They get you got sinkholes in Latin America. Sinkhole de Mayo. You know anybody there? You know James Franco? James Franco doesn't even know my name. Would you say this is accurate to Jay's attitude in general if you were to invite him to a party somewhere? Well, uh, no, because he wouldn't go. Exactly. The, the, this conversation is the same, but it would end with him not going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's that's decades in the past. Jay just it doesn't is. go to parties. He doesn't go to everyone parties. Everyone knows it. He used to go to parties. If you want to come to his house and have a two-guy party. Yeah, a two-dude hangout party, he'd be more than happy to do that. 
When I hung out with him in Montreal the other week, we watched a show called Bait Car for four hours. That's a good show. It was incredible. We can probably, yeah, I've seen that show. Now those Hollywood Hills are added. That's a computer generated effect. Um, <laughs> Begun on the film The Last Starfighter, computer generated <laughs> computer effects generated date back effects. to the 80s. Um, we, uh, this area where Franco's house exists is geographically not a real area of Los Angeles. It's kind of in the hills. Yeah, anyone who's it's, from LA knows all the geography like, bullshit. There's no the place movie. you can really see the hill like that and also walk to Melrose and where there's also streets like this. But I mean, we wish, right? It didn't matter. Now, this house is mostly computer generated, actually. Um, the entire second story, the door is real, parts of the wall is real, but no house looks like that. We kind of wanted it to be a ridiculous looking house. We wanted Frank Gehry to say that he would let us uh, say he designed it, but he said no. I'm glad he did. It makes so much more sense that Franco <laughs> it's did. It's true, it does make more sense. And then we came up with the idea that Franco designed it himself instead of Frank Gehry. But uh, it would have been, I don't know. It was a little dis it was a little disappointing when he said no. Life's uh, full of disappointments. This is Franco's house, which is built in a warehouse that was used to store coffee beans in New Orleans. Yeah, there were so many movies filming that we could not even get a movie warehouse. So we got a coffee bean warehouse. And that we, uh, it, it didn't uh, smell like coffee beans, which I expected. No, it really wasn't that bad. But the air conditioning was just a bunch of tubes that they stabbed holes in with knives and then strung up from the ceiling. Yeah, but it actually worked pretty good. I think we got better air conditioning because of it. Yeah. Um, let's, talk now, about, let's talk about the art. This scene happened because Franco came to New Orleans and said he wanted to paint some paintings for the movie. Those paintings, some of them, I mean, there was the Freaks and Geeks ones you see, and there's a Pineapple Express, and there's these weed leaves. But he painted giant paintings of our names, of my name and his name. And when I saw it, it was kind of like how it is in the movie. I was like, oh, my God, thank you. He's like, is it weird? I was like, no, it's super complimentary and nice. And then we pretty much put it in the movie exactly how it happened. Um, but uh, yeah, how many paintings do you think he made? Like twenty six. He made a lot of paintings. He made like an entire warehouse. He did one of you with a uh, sword fighting a dragon that I called Keeps on. That one was pretty dope. Oh this is Mindy Kaling, who's super duper funny. This is how I met her. I met her this day. She uh, was in Forty Year Old Virgin. That's how I first met her. I was on her TV show, which was a lot of fun. She a funny woman. She hilarious. There's Rihanna and Jason Siegel and Michael Sarah. Now we've told the story a lot, but she actually slapped the living shit out of him right there. She, she and the reason he's holding his ear like that is because she really hurt his ear. Yeah, she like <laughs> cupped it and uh, kind of fucked up his equilibrium, and he was really messed up. And that yeah. we had to stop the scene, but we had it at that point, so it's cool. Jonah always had this idea for his character that he would be like one of those guys that you. That is like super nice on the surface, but you could make an argument was fucking with you and was yeah. maybe actually not that nice. And for Jay, like it always feels when you know that you always feel like no one else gets it. Exactly. Like, can't you see this guy's a fucking idiot? And and you and, and it works so well because you totally get why Jay hates him, but you also get why people would like him because it's funny and he seems nice. No, I would say weed is the, tight the, is the, one of my favorite jokes. Weed is tight. Yeah, Jonah says that's his favorite joke he ever told. Weed is tight, and he should be proud of weed it. Weed is tight. He made that up. That was I feel funny. like this scene relays the most dynamic between three characters. As quick as possible. Ever maybe like, in a movie. In, yeah. in the history of film. Jonah Cinema. and Jane, you were just like getting it, getting it done. <laughs> maybe the most ever in movies. Citizen uh, Kane takes like a long oh, movie to get, it's just plotting. to get over like one it's thing. It's plotting. That's my dog, Zelda. She uh, actually does know how to bark. That picture was taken in a bathtub. I try to sneak her into the movie. This, this joke, I don't know. It's funny in the movie. It's, no, it works. It's a physical gag. It works. It's like, me, it's like a clown humor. Like he's, yeah. he's making a funny face. And the audience does recognize Zelda when she comes back in the end. And oh, for it gets sure. a big laugh and a cheer. So it does work. Aja returns. Maybe the sequel is from her perspective. That's a good idea. This is where we're laying the pipe, where we're putting the emotional story. Laying the pipe, as they say. Is that the term? Or is that the nope. section? That's, that's the term for that fucking. That is a sexual term. That means fucking. Laying the pipe means fucking. We are, what's the story? We're, the we're movie fu term? fucking our way to the plot. We're fucking our way. We're fucking the plot in there. We're laying the pipe. <laughs> this is another scene that we did not write at all and we'll get credit for. Unless Lay you're listening to this. Yeah. Uh, this is a conversation me and Jason Siegel have had, literally. And I was Kevin Hart in this conversation. And, uh, like, 
it, it's funny that he put it in the movie. And him and Jason and Kevin known each other for years. Judd did a pilot with them in like 2001. They were forced to live together as roommates. In real life? Yeah, because in the pilot they lived together. So Judd made them live together, which was actually genius if you think about it. It is pretty genius. You don't like LA? Emma Watson. We used to have Michael Sarah come in this scene, throw a cigarette at Jay, and ask my, ask Emma Watson if he can live with her, and then tell <laughs> Craig that they were inevitably going to fuck one day, and tonight's the night. And then we cut that. It was funny. It was just a little too much Michael Sarah. There's a lot of funny Michael Sarah we didn't use in the end. Yeah. Um, That's what he gets for acting so good that we yeah. only pay attention to it him. It just overshadows everything else. Uh, this was Emma's first scene in the movie. We completely rewrote it right before we shot it, which I think horrified her. We did it with her, though, so that might have... I didn't realize she's been in, like, seven movies based on books, so there's probably not a whole lot of, like, rewriting in the moment. <laughs> what if Hermione didn't do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's kind of an entire billion-dollar franchise based on the fact that she does. Uh, the music playing in this scene is James Franco's band. It is. Daddy, they're called, I believe. And this is his Motown, music. Motown is their So thing. this is maybe the most meta scene in the movie, because it's us discussing a sequel for a movie. That it's our actual idea for the sequel. And you discuss how this movie ends with him. It's right true. Here. I wonder how many people realize, as Franco saying, Danny kills me and I die for you, and Danny eats me. I think very few people probably realize that that's actually what happens in this movie. Um... <laughs> I wonder if they piece it together. Maybe that's a second viewing thing. I think, I think it, it is. I think that's maybe a second viewing joke, but we'll see. Well, it, this was just funny. It's all the super bad gentlemen together in maybe the weirdest way possible. Uh, this was all improvised. I think we just told Michael to blow the cocaine in, in, in Chris Boss's face. Chris Boss is a delightful human. We should say that. I just had to get off the phone with him to do this. We actually did. He's in a band. What are they called? Should we play? They're called the Young Rapscallions, the I Young believe. The Young Um Buy their albums and follow them their for album. the rest of your life. Follow the Young Rapscallions on tour. Send them money. Now, Craig Robinson is known at parties to get a keyboard and set it up and sing Take Your Panties Off for people. It is also done in his musical sets, but he has done this in my house. At parties. While Ken Jeong danced in a leotard. Yeah, and so we asked him to do it in the movie and wear a t-shirt that said Take Your Panties Off. He also actually has that towel with him a lot because he sweats like a no, motherfucker. He liked like, he genuinely showed up to work often with that shirt, that necklace, those jeans, those shoes, and that towel, and then got out of it and got into his wardrobe. Was Which the was the essentially the same thing. Uh, Michael's tugging on his uh, windbreaker there. That was his only note as an actor. He did everything we asked him to with no question. He just wanted that windbreaker on, <laughs> which, is his, which is his personal windbreaker. <laughs> that shot of Seagull trying to fit in always makes me laugh. You remember, we, we tried to get a noise in there where Seagull goes, <laughs> <laughs> but it was but, weird. Yeah, it seemed weird. In this scene, we always had Jay go, California, like from <laughs> Die Hard. <laughs> but uh, and it just didn't land for some reason. <laughs> Now, Rihanna singing, that was nice that she sang, because we were afraid to ask her to sing, and so, thank God, Craig sang to her, and she just sang back pretty much She like probably that. thinks we deceived her as directors in some capacity. And That's what directors do, Evan. We let the actor deceive themselves. Bring her. No. I was afraid to request it. Michael Sarah's butt in this scene is... A computer-generated effect as well. It's a computer booty. We added a ridiculous tan line to it, and we made it a little bit more of a quote-unquote bubble butt than I believe the real Michael Sarah actually has. I think Michael's got a pretty bubbly butt. We made it bubblier. Bubbly, 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 bubbly. Uh, we, uh, we, now this... We pretty much built almost everything you see here. Well, that, that, that was a that was a bunch of empty storefronts, and we that dressed was empty it. storefronts, and we dressed and it. And then the stuff on the right here was empty. Storefront. Some of that was empty storefronts. But the entire convenience lots of these store. sidewalks, I think, and planters. Yeah, we that added, tree the trees wasn't there. And the curbs and the parking meters. But all the, these the, palm the big trees. Thing is when we turn around to the convenience store, that was just an empty parking. Yeah, that was nothing. Uh, all the billboards are computer generated. This was all built. This literally didn't exist, the convenience store, and we completely built it because we were going to destroy it. Which and leads us to a shout-out to Christopher Spellman. Chris Spellman, our production designer. That gentleman's name was Johans. I will never forget that Yes, because I and thought it was an interesting name. Not as much of his acting got in as I would have no, liked because he, he had, did a good job. We had a more, in the movie, but when we shot it, we had more of a bit where we kind of established certain people in the story as being good or bad. Johans just, is getting ice cream for his girlfriend and yeah, he just won't quit. Exactly. Because he like, loves her so damn much. And there was a priest and there was another bit. And like, so there was a little bit more like, this guy's good. That's why he's getting sucked up. But then we realized you kind of 
didn't need that for the time we had. I can't remember the cashier's name. She was excellent. She was very funny. And this is something, when I get stoned, I do get cash register lady anxiety. Um, and uh, I think that that needs to be addressed in some capacity. Dude, I want you to get to know these guys. That's never going to happen if you don't put in any... Now, this part was fun to watch because it's the first time we realized we could scare the living shit out of people in a movie. Something we'd never really done before. Yeah, people really, that, that, that yeah. worked. It worked really well. Now, with the way all that stuff you're seeing in the background is all CG, all those palm trees swaying around and the dancing. Billboard, the billboards are fake. These flares are all fake. All if these, you, if, if you, you watch a lot of these movies, the flares they do are fake in Superman and Star Trek. All the yeah, flares Star are... Yeah, Star Trek, they're probably all fake, I would they're, they're all added in post-production. They're computer-generated. Something a that only them. a few people have noticed. You'll see in the backboard a billboard for Ninja Rapist. Yeah, a uh, background, yeah. We, it's uh, behind Jay. <laughs> yeah. We like to come up with fake movie posters that we never show to anybody, and that was one of them. Yeah, and uh, we thought it was a funny fake movie that was coming to theaters next summer. On the other billboard was one of our editors. Editor. Yeah, uh, it's uh, what, when we were making Green Hornet, the production editor told us if you're going to build something, you should destroy it. And that's what we did with a lot of the sets in the movie. Pretty much everything we built, we ended up destroying, including this convenience store, like that. And uh, this shot was, that was actually our visual effects supervisor, Paul, who got hit by that car, uh, <laughs> which was nice. Uh, the, this whole shot is extended. It kind of just ends, but we just yeah, make it Yeah, all the fires like are going. added in post. The blocks in the background are added. The entire street going up the block in front of us is added. That literally just dropped off into nothing. Um, there's a lot of visual effects that were fun to do. It was amazing to see how much you could fill out the shots. The sky, we made that orange. That wasn't orange. I mean, all that stuff. The hill Hollywood again. Sign. The house is a visual effect. Wait, when you said dropped off into nothing, you meant the 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 traffic sign just vanishes? It, no, the whole street just like, it was just black. There was no street lights. There was no even houses up that block. It was just like fields kind of. Oh, I thought you meant, I thought you were referring to one of the yeah. mistakes we made. Uh, these days were stressful when we had all the people there and the extras and uh, there was like 20 famous people on set at the same time you had to make sure every, it was kind of like throwing a party at James Franco's house a party where we don't get to drink and we have to organize everything and keep cleaning I drank the whole time you did not I drank your dick son <laughs> um, you did I uh this scene was, I remember thinking, like, this uh, better work. Like, if it doesn't seem real, and, like, Jay actually saw blue lights and is actually freaked out, and if this scene's ridiculous, the whole fucking movie ain't gonna work. Because <laughs> this scene where it's, like, gets weird, where it kind of collides, like, the supernatural world and the, and the party world, you what know? What I always think about with this scene is, it seems like you're lying, and then we just never get back into that and don't address it. We had it a for version where I later admit that I did see the blue lights, and I say that it was just so long ago, no one gave a shit. No one gave a fuck, which was interesting. What I always think about, which is mundane, is that Franco specifically wanted to hold a Fanta this whole time. He did want a Fanta. Maybe he just loves Fanta. Who doesn't? In an out truck is something they do at LA parties sometimes when a truck shows up and gives people delicious hamburgers. Uh, it's something rich people do. I've never seen it happen at a party. I've only had oh, it on a movie set. I've seen it happen at parties and it's awesome. Now, the inside of Franco's house and the outside of Franco's house were two different places. And the backyard. And the was backyard was a different yeah. place, which was confusing. Um, that whole hill is computer generated. We were literally looking at nothing. Yeah, every fire, uh, the, blink, the blinking of the car lights, the cracked yeah. road. Uh, but if you look, you can see little Paul Red running down the street in that shot. Do you remember how we came up with that, uh, giant bottle? I we can't remember I whose we idea it was. It might have been Shafir's idea, or someone like that, maybe Kyle, or maybe Paul's idea. Um, but yeah, the idea came up that he had a giant, humorous bottle of champagne that he was bringing to Franco's party. This shot took a long time, that ground cracking. Yeah. We spent some time in a dark room on that one. On that one, this old pole, too, yeah, this... Took a while. Seagull gets sprayed in the face by blood, which is one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. Yeah, during the uh, production of the film, we shot him in the face with a blood cannon, but we were so used to spraying blood on people and doing crazy shit, we kind of just forgot to tell him what was happening. Yeah, we just shot him with blood. And then we had to apologize after. He was like, you could have given me a bit of a warning there, dudes. We shot this whole thing with Michael actually on a giant crane that lifted him up. Yeah, he was like 30 sky. feet up. It was pretty awesome. 
That is a completely computer-generated little Michael Sarah there, <laughs> which is hilarious to, to think of. I remember... Now, this was all complicated, because all this stuff on the front lawn is one place, and then right there it goes to another place. That's us and on that's a set. A, that's a different one. That's, we, had, we had two walls, yeah. a 16-foot and an 8-foot. So but, Jason just fell off the 8-foot, but Jay right here is falling into the 16-foot. No, that's his stunt guy, though. That's not him. I didn't and want to confuse people, And that's Seth. Jonah running into a fake house. That's all green screen. That's not green screen, but that is green screen. This is the actual front lawn. That was a fun shot. Oh, yeah. That we used uh, K our effect guys, KMB, Howard, and Greg, built like this amazing fake head that Paul just actually stepped on and it popped like a fucking grape. It was wonderful. This shot took a long time to get right, and Martin getting... Yeah, Martin's hair. Her. Something about his hair just made it yeah. so difficult. And this was... This was a... This was a disaster. Fra Franco was laughing at us from day yeah. one. So we had it that, like, a sharp rock, like, leverage kind of cuts Aziz's arm off. Like, and literally, as we were practicing Franco was like, it, that's not yeah. how arms cut off. I was in 127 hours. I know how arms come off. It would be so much harder to cut an arm off than that. And we were like, fuck you, it'll work. And then it didn't. And then we had to add this wire popping up and snapping his arm off. And Franco was laughing all the way to Franco Town, <laughs> which he's mayor of. This is our magic Krumholtz moment. David Krumholtz, David Krumholtz at his best. We've been good friends a very long time. We were on Freaks and Geeks together. He's in an episode. And him and so I've known him since I was around 17 years old. He was my first friend, him, Jay, and Martin, when I came to L.A. So I found it extra funny to put him, Jay, Martin in a hole and let them all die. And some satisfaction there. It was satisfactory. It's just funny that Jay's probably closest with Dave out of everybody in the movie. It's true, and he lets him die. <laughs> it was just a funny joke for us to do, because like I feel like there's so many movies where someone like pulls someone out of a hole like that, and it would be fucking impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, you I could would pull like uh, instantly. Shug. I have a friend named Shug who weighs 100 yeah, pounds. Yeah, she was 100 pounds. I could pull her up. I could probably pull my wife up enough that she could like climb up me, but I couldn't pull like a man up. No, if you fell down a hole and we were in that situation, you're yeah. fucking dead. Yeah, you're dead. I'm dead. I couldn't pull my own body. Don't ask for me. Yeah, I couldn't do one chin up. You fucking kidding me? I can do what Jay just did. I can do two chin-ups, so I might be able to get out of that. This is a purely computer-generated hole. All the sidewalk. It was, uh, this shot took a while. We kept saying, more smoke, more smoke, integrate the smoke, more smoke. And eventually, we ran out of money. So that's we had, what we were left with. <laughs> we had, like, two modes for the house, because we didn't shoot it all in order. So we had the broken house and the non-broken house, and we could pull wall pieces off and put cracked wall pieces on. Yeah. That was a bit of a pain. The scene we wanted to feel kind of crazy and frantic. Uh, our kind of visual idea for the whole movie was that you were, like, in the house with the guys. We didn't want a lot of shots that, like, were too stylistically outside what a person's regular perspective would be, you know? Um, we wanted it to feel like you were just literally one of the guys in the house, that you were kind of just stuck in the house with them. Uh, so we tried to do just a lot of over-the-shoulder shots. We wanted to kind of have a lot of the guys in a lot of the shots just to kind of, you know, make use of the fact that we had them all. So that was just kind of generally our thought process, our, what little thought process we had but about how the movie should look. <laughs> we watched Apocalypse Now a lot, too, just as far as, like, the golden hot lighting that kind of comes in. That dude was not happy with us, yeah, I'll that's tell you all, that's, that much. That's all I was thinking. <laughs> we wanted him to say that Barack Obama was dead and Mitt Romney because we didn't know who was going to win the election. Yeah, we were shooting before the election, and he was he's like, I'm a real newscaster. And we were like, yeah. But, right, right now you're an actor, and, and we want you to say that Barack Obama is dead. Is dead. <laughs> TV. The TV said stay here. It said stay in your homes. We need to stay We had a hard time getting this titty fuck joke out. It was a zinger. It was a real humdinger. They'll get Clooney, Sandra Bullock. Jonah's character was largely his idea. That earring was fucking a pretty wonderful choice. That was his idea. It kept falling off. We tried to convince him to actually pierce his ear. And he had an ear piercing earlier in life. Like, yeah, so like, just it. do it, dude. And he almost did it. And then he made probably the wise decision of not actually getting a giant the, diamond earring. I think it was irresponsible. Of yeah, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit irresponsible of all of us. This towel continuity got difficult at times. Yeah, that was... I, I, I want to say it was a mistake. It wasn't. It wasn't. It's awesome. The towel works. The towel stays. I think we got to give a big shout-out to Jonathan Watson, 
right now. Our first AD. Because this joke was his idea. Good call, Evan. So we always had it that this helicopter crashed and the blade came through. And in our version, we shot a bunch of different versions. In one version, Craig was just standing there. And the joke was like, he didn't even move. One he was he hopped him. back like what? in a cartoon. Yeah, like in a cartoon. Like he made his body into like a C shape. And then Watson, Jonathan Watson, had the idea that... This would happen, essentially. He described it exactly like this. He acts like something terrible happened, and then he holds his finger up, and you see there's just one little tiny scratch. And it's one of the biggest laughs in the entire movie. And I'll tell you a weird little fact. That drop of blood took a lot of work. That was computer-generated. And that, it was not easy to blood. do. Yeah. A toolbox. I don't know, look in there. Ozzy Osbourne gave us this song to use, which was awesome. This scene was kind of... So so, and then we couldn't uh, figure out how to fix it. And then our zed uh, our zed our editor, Zine Baker, our, our editor, editor, who I f will forever call our zed editor, <laughs> after making that mistake I just made. Um, he, I think, did this cool remix thing of uh, War Pigs, and uh, Ozzy Osbourne himself came to watch the movie to clear its use, and Ozzy loved it, and he let us use it. Franco painted those paintings. We should mention some of the other artists. Shepard Ferry gave us uh, the right to use his art. He did that Obey piece. That of course, the, the guy who painted with Franco. Helicopter Blade. Uh, Josh, Josh Smith, Smith did the paintings with Franco. Uh, Terry Richardson. Ron English. Fail, Fail did those uh, paintings of all the little squares. Uh, Ron English did the titty to pear be fair, painting. We and the production department created that penis. Yeah, that was our thing. Sour Diesel, three and a half grams Grandmaster Kush, one ounce of shrooms, 15 pills of ecstasy, a porno mag, a baseball bat, and the video camera from the movie 27 Hours. 127 hours. Uh, 127 hours. And a functioning revolver from the movie Flyboys. Old Faithful. Okay, just, Jesus. This thing's real. No, I kept this from the movie. Yeah, this is the yeah. actual revolver. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Franco is very uncomfortable yeah. to put that down. All the props that Franco has, like, that is actually the actual yeah, gun. Yeah, that's from literally Flyboy. the gun from that Flyboy. That is the camera from that 127 Hours. That is actually hours. the camera from When Jay and Craig go next door, that is the that's backpack. That's the backpack from 127, 127 hours. hours. It's the actual Pineapple Express bag. Yes, the bag from Pineapple. Headband. Yeah. Uh, we keep it real. Th this it, whole uh, gun thing literally just came from uh, this was all improvised. us telling Franco to just throw the gun to Jonah. And sometimes, like, we had already shot this shot you see here before Jonah started doing this. And then after he started doing it, we had to go back and shoot it again, that wide shot, uh, because he, you know, he hadn't done it yet and we needed to match, which yeah, is which one of the... sounds interesting, but it's super uncool when yeah, it happens. Yeah, exactly. And this shot here, we had to go back and do my coverage again. It feels like a failure on your behalf, but you have to do it because you got to roll with those improv punches. That Seth and Evans guide to flirm making. <laughs> uh, we keep saying this, and I feel like when this comes out, it'll still be true. The people at Milky Way haven't sent us anything. Yeah, seriously, Milky Way, if you're listening to this, w this is literally five of the most famous comedians on Earth talking about how delicious Milky Way is, how good Milky Way is, how much they want Milky Way. It could have been We're a Snickers. Fighting over Mil it could have been a goddamn Snickers. It could have been a Mars bars. It could have been. We uh, chose Milky Way. Out it of could have been Kit Kat, respect. but we chose Milky Way. And what have you chose to do? Nothing. Just send my, send us a six pack of chocolate bars. Send me one goddamn Milky yeah. Way. You can send us one to share. Yeah, just we'll share a fucking Milky Way. It can be Where's a, our it can Milky be a mini way? Halloween sized one. Just something. A fun size Milky Way. I wrote the people at Naked Juice a letter, and they sent me back a free bottle of Naked Juice. We literally, this is the most Milky Way aggrandizing movie in the history of film. We're going to do the Milky Way with E.T. did a Reese's Pieces. Actually, though, now I'm feeling, <laughs> where's our Nutella? Where's our fucking where's our Nutella? Taco shells? Where's our taco shells? Where's our skim milk? Arrowhead hasn't contributed anything to us. Yeah, we serve Arrowhead on our movie sets. More than anything, it's amazing that those products let us use them. <laughs> yeah, they'll regret it in a few days when the movie yeah. comes out. This Franco sleeping with the noise-canceling headphones and the eye mask always seem to get a good giggle. People always seem to enjoy that. I don't know if Franco actually does that. I picture him having eye, eye masks and headphones. I picture him sleeping in gravity boots. <laughs> he hangs upside down, I believe. I picture him having one of those big silver Fortress of Solitude type beds, like from the original mm. Superman movie. That always looked like a comfortable bed to me. That There's was a lot, a lot of good improv in this scene that didn't get used. Yeah, this scene we just thought would be best short. This is emotional pipe we're laying. We're laying more pipe here. Emotional pipe. 
We used to all take naps there whenever we could, mostly Franco and Craig and Jonah and the other actors. It's true. Because we were all on set so much together in this house, it kind of like... And because if you go outside, since it's July in New Orleans, you become disgustingly drenched in sweat within 10 seconds. Yeah, like people would hang out on... In Franco's house a lot, and like we would hang out kind of in the same areas where we shot the movie, which was which I guess funny. means we succeeded at what we wanted, which is to make a house that's kind of a douchey house, that but you also kind of a house you kind in. of want to hang out in. Yeah, that's how Franco does it. Every time they stop rolling, he sits down and just conserves energy. He conserves energy. his energy. You got to conserve energy. That's what I'm doing right now. DMX uh, tweeted. If yeah. you're listening to this in the future, Twitter is a technology that was popular in 2013 no. where people could type 140 character <laughs> uh, messages and put them out. DMX, the rap artist, tweeted out uh, our movie trailer because we referenced him here, which was exciting. It makes me think maybe DMX knows who I am, and that notion is exciting to me. Maybe he knows who I am and doesn't know who you are. You could be right. The audience gets a little scared here, which is also nice. Craig is digitally blacked out in that scene, because lighting-wise, you can't really achieve what we did there. Well, maybe you can, and we're just not good. Enough. Maybe we just didn't. <laughs> but we digitally darkened uh, him out for the reveal. This joke was always funny, and I'm always glad this worked, where we have Jonah up here out of nowhere and scare people. Yeah, it was one of those things that it worked, but when we added the noise... It really worked much better. Henry Jackman is now when we say thank you to Henry Jackman, our composer. Sorry. He's a wonderful man, British man. We have a Commonwealth connection. That we had a Commonwealth connection. We would bring it up all the time. It's in God Save the Queen. He's the composer who seems to laugh the most while working. <laughs> he does, and he totally, we told him there just could be like no rhyme or reason of the music. Like sometimes it would have to be big and orchestral, sometimes it would have to be kind of, you know, hip hop y and horror music y, and sometimes it would have to be. You know, it had to be all sorts of stuff, and he was like, okay, great, sounds cool. No rules. I like that. This whole thing was improvised. The entire, the scene ended in the script when Jonah sat down, but then we improvised. I'm glad docking made it into this movie. Yeah, yeah. This it had might to be get the first something. movie with a docking joke. Docking, for those of you who don't know, is a sexual term wherein... Uh, an uncircumcised uh, man rolls his foreskin over the tip of another man's penis. Docking, ladies and gentlemen. I just don't buy that that would be pleasurable. <laughs> it's more. Know. It's more of a we, say we you did can, it kind we of thing. Try it right here in the studio. No, we don't have the for, we don't have the foreskin for it, and you know it's it. true. We don't. I have, I have a pretty loose. Foreskin. We need Kyle. <laughs> we need our one non non circumcised friend. Um, it's true. Jonah says you get a dock into me. Uh, we Jay's half Jewish, half Christian. Who knows if he can dock? He can dock himself. That's what that means. <laughs> uh, Speaking of docking, here's Danny here's McBride. Danny, McBride. <laughs> <laughs> Danny McBride's docking into this movie right here. Uh, Th this scene was a motherfucker. Not to film, not to edit, but to get the right song for. Yeah, we went through a lot. And this is, I'm very pleased we wound up with this. It's fun. It's hilarious. But, I just love Cypress Hill. Who doesn't? Um, I feel like it's also time to mention our big musical faux pas. We thought it'd be cool if this music had all gospel music. If the song, if the movie had all gospel music. And uh, we yeah. tried it. You fucking idiot. It didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work at all. Um, and so we replaced it with all sorts of different kinds of music. Lots of music from the ni late 90s, early 2000s. <laughs> as you watch it, right? Mm hmm We also filmed a gospel choir singing. Yeah. Videotaped it all. Maybe we should put that on the DVD. Why wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, why wouldn't we? Well, we'll see how that resol resolves itself when you've purchased this DVD. <laughs> if you're listening to this, you you have the DVD. This was Danny's first scene he shot, which was funny because he had a lot of, uh, like, zingers prepared, I would say. And we were all a little nervous because to us, Danny's like the funniest dude ever. And uh, he made up all this shit, including this James Franco didn't suck any dick line, which when he said... Was one of the funniest things. Do you I've know ever if heard. he came with that one on the day or if he? Came no, up he with just it. made it up. Because it started with James didn't Franco didn't suck any dick. That's a first. Like he was, was like you didn't suck any dick. That's a first. And then it evolved. Then he got it to James Franco didn't suck any dick last night. Now I know y'all are tripping. Which is a very well formed joke on Danny McBride's part. Okay, this joke was always funny. The fatalities. Danny just kills it in this scene. This scene was very. This was the first scene we released. 
It got whatever. We don't know how the movie's going to do yet, but let's pretend it does great. So this is what led us on the road to our massive early buzz that led us to be the box office giant that we ultimately became. <laughs> <laughs> Award Thank God. Jonah, of course, is an Academy Award-nominated person. James Franco, also Academy Award-nominated person. Two out of the six main actors in this movie are Academy Award-nominated And people. you won a Stoney, and Franco won two Stonies. I won a Stoney Award. Um, I uh, was nominated for an MTV Movie Award in 2004. I did not win. The guy who's about to pop his head through this door is named Brian Husky. If you need someone to make something funny that you didn't write, <laughs> hire call Brian, Brian Husky. Because <laughs> he improvises very well. Um, now, Brian Husky is like somewhat recognizable. He's in some commercials and he's on like Veep sometimes. And so we actually had him film a take or two where he's like, I'm Brian Husky. I'm on Veep. I'm in some commercials. Uh, just in case he became recognizable in the time we made the movie or, or when we screened the movie, people were like, I know that guy. It's the guy in those commercials. We didn't want to ignore the reality of the movie, which is that everyone is themselves. Well, the truth know? is we at first didn't want to hire him because we thought he was too recognizable, but he was. there was just nobody who did it even close to as good as him. Yeah, he was very funny. Oh, my ass hurts, but I'm going to slug through it. Yeah, our, our, <laughs> our casting director, Francine Maisler, made actors punch their head through a, a piece of paper. Yeah, a piece so of butcher shit paper. We only ever saw their auditions head only. Yeah, we were in New Orleans, so they had to send their auditions in on tape, and we just saw their heads. And Brian was heads above the rest. Heads and tails above the rest? No, tails wouldn't make sense. Just heads above. Just oh, heads above. I get what you did then. Yes. Yeah. Now, this head... <laughs> I almost just threw up. This head was a head that K&B built. Oh, um, God. It was empty. It had, like, a reservoir inside of it that you could literally fill with, like, a gallon of blood. Yeah, we would, like, be like, reload! And so we just fill the head with blood and kick it around. That shot was achieved by putting one of our cameras inside a giant sphere that was roughly the size of a large beach ball. And... The actors, we would just roll it to each other as we screamed like yeah, and, fucking and, idiots. And at Video Village, which is where you watch the playback as the director and the uh, director for photography, we couldn't see it. So we just stood there and heard like, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, uh, we would have to come in and see how they did, and they did good. Yeah, we did very well. More of those shots made it in than anyone thought. Did you see on the DVD stuff, Brandon saying that when we told him he that thought, he thought it, was it was a stupid, stupid idea. idea? Fuck you, a Brandon. stupid idea, We Brandon. regret hiring you. Look what you say. Uh, you, we don't you, regret it. You bite regret. the teat that milks you. <laughs> that you're, you're bungling your sayings. I'm not, Evan. This is all the accurate sayings. Um, this now, used this to be was a, a giant. This scene was one of the biggest scenes that we cut down. It's on the DVD. You can see it. You can unless we cut it. it tomorrow. But I don't think DVD, we will. Time will tell. That is all CG. Everything out the window CG. We're literally looking at nothing. All that stuff is fake. That's all fake. Fake flare. All fake. It's all lies, people. This was um, a, a big win for us, this idea. This really helped us in, in uh, telling our tale. Yeah, we set up this confessional room where um, we could record confessionals easily with this little camera. And this straight up, like, we just discussed the real world and said we should just do yeah, what we, we do in the real, the real world. world. They're stuck in a house. And kind of like, and it was also kind of based on like paranormal activity and like uh, yeah, 127 yeah. hours a little bit also. And my personal confessional collection. Yes, and, and me and Evan keep personal diaries of our own lives. Um, and... Uh, and so we had each actor record tons and tons of stuff in these little confessional Yeah, there's things. at least an hour of each guy on and his own. And we use it throughout the movie really well. Os Gemios, our uh, artist whose work is featured behind Franco by the hookah. They're from Brazil. They're wonderful. And I appreciate them giving us permission to use their work in the movie. Uh, we used to have a lot more footage where he uh, masturbated on some of James's books. Yeah, we had a lot more Danny doing gross shit in these confessionals, but we cut it. There was one where he was like, look at this, there's a place in Vietnam called Fuck Bin. <laughs> Which is true. Which is true. Um, the scene was largely improvised. We just kind of talked about what different theories could be. Jonah made up the sink sinkhole de Mayo thing. The picture at the back of the room of uh, telephone wires, that's Seth's photo. I took that wonderful photo of telephone wires... It looks like a cross. That's why we put it back. You there. should try to sell it now through this format. How uh, much? How much? How much? How much would you sell that for? All of it. Four million dollars. That's on sale for four. Wait, million no, no, bucks. no. Oh. Four million euros. Four million euros. Yes, exclusively. 
Just please send your money to Sony Pictures Studios. It's on Washington near Madison and Overland. <laughs> into my kingdom of heaven. That's the rapture. Those are the gigantic beams of blue light. And there will be a great mountain burning in fire. I mean, the Hollywood Hills are literally engulfed in flames as we sit here right now. The Hollywood Hills ain't no mountain. It's a hill. It takes about 10 minutes to get across that motherfucker with no traffic. Cold water. I take Laurel Canyon. Come on. What's great about our composer is he's an ace of all trades. He's, he's, he, he's comfortable with everything, which was very nice. Dragon having seven heads, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, was released. Unto the earth. That's a computer generated image. Yeah, we had a sillier image. We had a lot of trouble. Uh, we, I personally drew it, I think, the last one. No, Jen drew the last one. It just was too cartoony. No disrespect to Jen. No disrespect to Jen. People really listen to these and get insulted if you say bad things. Is that true? I Have you ever listened to one of our audio commentaries? No. I haven't either. I've listened to should we Starship Troopers and The Shining, and those are the only ones I've ever listened to in my life. We should make this oh, audio and the making of the highway fight in Matrix Two. Oh yeah, I watched that. That was too. fucking cool. That was great. That's a great behind the scenes feature. Are you kidding me? This is an homage to hey guys, what am I thinking of? Don't say it. They'll sue us. Don't say it. Don't say it. Because we tried to clear it. Oh. Tried to clear what? Exactly. This scene's about <laughs> something else. Let's talk about it. Uh this is us. Uh, being bored in the house. Um, That's real cheese. Bought it at a real <laughs> grocery store. Or some shit. Come on, Daddy! Oh, oh, come on, man. I'm just saying. Run, we always had the idea that Franco. I mean, what, Franco actually came up with the idea that he's obsessed with me and in love with me. And then we started looking for ways that that could play in. And the idea that he kind of starts sneaking me food was entertaining to us. This is this is one of my. I, I threw the line out with cheese without a few crackers. Yeah, that's one of my proudest in my life. And I believe it was my idea to shove the crackers. That's fucking teamwork. Yeah, that's, that's teamwork, man. That's how our partnership works, people. Uh, that, of course, is a lot of drugs. And I don't recommend any kid do all those drugs. Jay kills time. me here that it goes back to the stupid look on your face. <laughs> we, now, we overdid this at first. Let's talk about Gangnam Style. Now, am I proud that Gangnam Style is in this movie? I don't know. But well, here's what I do know. We tried Gangnam Style. We started to not like Gangnam Style. We tried a million other songs to replace Gangnam in Style. Theater. We tried it in theater. And we what did we audience. learn? People fucking love Gangnam Style. There's a reason it's one of the biggest songs ever. One billion people can't be wrong. One billion. Ten I billion? Tried, uh, at least 15 billion people. By the time you're that. listening to this in the future, Gangnam Style could be the fucking national anthem for all we know. This was the... Most fun we've ever had doing anything. This uh, Pineapple Express too. Yeah, this was fun. We'd written this into the script and then uh, we cut it out because we thought it was maybe too, you know, <laughs> rubbing our own. We tried to rub it a little we tried to, too much. We were trying to ride the line between self-referential and self-indulgent, and we feel we felt we were afraid maybe this was falling into the self-indulgent land. Only you uh, know, <laughs> person watching. <laughs> only you. Only you're the judge, guy listening to this or girl. Um, but then Franco... Woody uh, Harrelson saw the movie yesterday. Yeah, we heard he, he liked He was it. not offended, I hear. No. Which is good to know. But uh, then we told Franco, like, oh, we had this stupid idea where we make Pineapple Express 2. And his eyes lit up like a, like a child on Christmas. And he's like, we have to film that. And we're like, no, I don't think we have time. He's like, no, we have to. We have to. And he just... Like, he willed it into being. You can't say no to James Franco. I... Fucking double dare you. When he starts smiling, it's over. Once he gets flashes over. those pearly whites and those steely blues or browns, those pooey browns. <laughs> those pearly whites. This those... shot made me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> you slow, slow yourself down. Coming together. This shit's the dumbest stuff we've ever done. Right here, right now. I feel like if I was to redo this, I would have had more references to what ultimately happened at the end of our movie. No. Oh, more references. No. No. No? That's pushing it. You think? People might have caught on. Maybe. Oh, Nick's here, and he's got a ton of food. What does he have? I don't know. What is this? Oh, it looks incredible. Oh, yeah. is it a big tray of stuff? Is that like Baja Fresh or something? Nick's like responsible for a lot of his DVD, <laughs> but he's also very selfish and only gets food for himself whenever mm -hmm. he has the opportunity. A giant tray of food, nonetheless. Here comes Emma. <laughs> we wanted to put the Harry Potter twinkle in there. Yeah. But we just like, we didn't even try. Yeah, we, we knew that wasn't that. happening. We probably wouldn't. We wouldn't have been able to afford it. Do you remember it. how it goes? We can't even jingle it. We right can't now. jingle it. We can't jingle that jingle. You, you people play it in your head. You know how it goes. Picture in your head that Harry Potter song. Uh, that'd be a great Harry Potter. That's yeah, that's how we'll supplement it. 
Harry Potter music, yeah. That could be the cheapest way ever to put music in a movie, is to just, people know the songs. We don't have to say... It's like, I'm a know, killer queen. Yeah. Dynamite. He, 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 you can't even do that. Just be like... Can't do that? No, you gotta be I like... the words? Killer queen! No, just like, and now killer queen plays in your head. And then you just go, Dan. it. <laughs> and then, yeah, Dana, just like... Uh, so, uh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> just maybe the words on the bottom of the screen flash. Now, Whole lot of Love by Led Zeppelin is playing in your head. Picture it. And then you just hear the ticker. Bum, 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 bum. That could work. Maybe we've uncovered something, people. <laughs> so fucking tight. We'll be right out here, okay? Fuck are you guys doing out here? You know, we didn't initially have a woman in the movie. We had, you know, some women at the initial party, and then we were afraid to have a woman come back because it's about a bunch of guys, and as Danny Boyle's brilliant masterpiece, uh, 28 Days Later proved us anything, it's that when you have one woman in an apocalyptic situation, shit gets rapey. And whenever people said, you know, you should have a woman come back, have a woman in there, we'd be like, oh, it's just going to feel rapey. We don't want it to feel rapey. And people would respond, you're right. And people were like, it. you're right. And then Ange... Ange Gianetti, our studio executive at Sony. And, and people should realize, like, studios don't give you the kind of yeah. note we are about to explain. And she said, we said, we can't add a woman come back, it'll feel rapey. And she said, you know what? Then make it rapey. Go with it. Yeah, she said, make the rapey a joke. Make it embrace the rapiness. And, and much we, to our shock, and we, we did thought, and it worked. You know what? Maybe we can embrace the rapiness and make that the joke. And that's what we did. So, and I like to think that this doesn't feel rapey at all. Well, I think the whole joke merely that we're uh, that we're saying that we're afraid that we'll come off as rapey implies that we would never rape someone. There's a chance people see that as rapey, and we just don't see it. For no, what it I is. think if you're the type of person that doesn't even you know that's so hyper aware of that, then I think the last thing you'll do is actually do that. Obviously, I hope that's what people perceive. Yeah, I hope that's what people perceive as well. Yeah, dude, one who denies it supplies it. I, I know it's farts. I get it. Guys, guys, guys. Jeez, no. I was very. This is one of those jokes where we were like, if this joke doesn't work, we are fucked in the butthole. Yeah, this is because, like the period blood and super. Yeah, like vibe. there was no way to cut around it. There's no other reason Emma Watson leaves this house other than overhearing this conversation. Like, and we needed to have Emma leave to steal our food, or else it made no sense why we didn't have anything. Like, we were totally. In hindsight, we could have always had one of them just eat all the food. Yeah, that could have worked. We should have see. We should have shot that as a safety. In case this whole rapey thing went sour. Next but time. Luckily, it didn't. And it seemed to play pretty well. I always find that funny how she says that. I'm just trying to talk about which one he tried to read me. It's a mouthful. She we gave her a mouthful. So I'm trying to find out which one he was Here's the thing. Him. So <laughs> no one knew that Seth was wearing breakaway <laughs> glasses at that moment. Yeah. And we all thought that she just shattered his nose into a million pieces. Yeah, she didn't. I'm just, I will say, I don't have many skills as an actor. One of the skills I do have is I'm pretty good at pretending that I got hurt. I think it's probably because... Hey, man, Charlie Chaplin had the same skill. I was I, I got hurt a lot as a kid. That was a moment we debated heavily. Are, we, re are the, we really just going to chop a dick? Are we the dick in half? And we decided, yeah. It's the same thing the, as are we going to give a demon a dick? In the end, the answer was, of course we were. If it involves a dick, we said yes. It would be amazing if right now Frank would just shot her in the head. <laughs> well, I still think that from that sinkhole sequence, people think that can happen. I know. It's true. We just viciously kill so many people so quickly... Hermione just stole all of our shit. That joke worked. It sure did. Us. And then Jay suggested that we all rape her, and now she's But like, I like this part. The abda, uh, I, 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 This joke, the fucking house bitch joke, is fucking crazy well, to he me. Couldn't, he, had, <laughs> he couldn't sell it more. Like, it seems so sincere from him. Yeah, to me, that, <laughs> that, that that's one of the craziest things anyone said, Daddy. I can't believe he actually did that. We should have had it in my other nostril, because you see it here on this side. If we had it in the other nostril, it would truly be a reveal by the time it panned over I see that as a, not as a failure upon us as directors, but as you failing as an actor. Well, I'll take that on myself, then. I'll take that. See? It gets like a chuckle. It would get a bigger laugh if we you hadn't gotten already a seen it. If we could have gone right. from chuckle to guffaw, maybe even a chortle. Let's go get the water. <laughs> no way we would have got a chortle. Let's go first. 
I'll do it. We kind of wanted a dramatic scene where people were kind of pulling shit to see who had to do something. It's in a lot of movies. And uh, Craig, uh, you know, we thought it'd just be funny if Craig instantly lost. That was kind of the joke behind the scene. This is one of the few and scenes. And then everyone reacts in the yes. worst way possible, yes. as always. Craig's got a great beard in this movie. Hey, he's got a great face. His eyes are attractive. His hair's luscious. A lot of facial hair in this film. Mm -hmm. This is a, I'm not going to say rip off. I'm going to choose to say homage from a sequence in the movie The Mist, wherein a gentleman uh, is going to venture out and they tie a rope to him. And he goes out, and I believe they just pull back in a pair of legs, if I'm not mistaken. Right? That is correct, Seth. <laughs> Which would have been a funny way for this sequence to end. It'd be funny, it'd be funny if they pull back a pair of, like, an another guy's legs. <laughs> or just, like, a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, something else. A boot. A this, fish. I consider this one of our greatest computer-generated uh, victories. Yeah, I mean, we literally shot this whole thing with, like, black tarps hanging around... A set. I the mean, only thing looked, that's real is that wall, and I think and one Craig. of the plants, and that plant, and that fire behind. But none it. of that hedge is real. None of the ash in the air is real. This is from the good people uh, at Hammerhead. I don't even think the fires are real, honestly. Jamie Dixon. I think we just had lights. I don't even think we had fires. We had. I think we had one. No. No, I, you're right. Because you can see the light behind it if you yeah, look. The yeah. way the light halos. Yeah, yeah we yeah, actually yeah. didn't even have fire. None of the fire is real. That hedge, all the smoke. I mean, Craig's torso is fake. Yeah. Uh, we should shout out Modus, who did our visual effects. In well, this is a hammerhead moment. This is a hammerhead we'll moment. We'll shout out Modus when they're doing the good Modus. I'm just stuff. gonna. I just. I'm gonna forget otherwise. I won't forget Modus. Uh, ah. All these claw marks and shit are fake. Uh, digitally. We added. used to have a great joke here where he goes, "My name's Daryl. I play Craig. I was it. I play Daryl on the Office. Please My name's don't Craig kill Robinson. me. I play Daryl on the Office." But we decided to make the sequence less funny and more scary and exciting because the audience seemed to want to be scared and excited, not humorsed. There's some jokes in there, but with Craig, you wanted to stay with him and kind of keep it scarier and more dramatic. And this is another thing where I truly think people think the goriest result is what's going to happen. I think people think Craig's fucking dead right there. And then they say, um, there's our friend Craig. There's Craig, thank God. But then... <gasps> it's not over! Yeah, 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 yeah. This is one of my favorite jokes in the whole movie. Yeah, the knife gag worked out pretty well. Um, Jay's reaction is just the best. It's like a fucking cartoon moment. Like he looks and then screams. <laughs> <laughs> like the timing of it is very silly. I uh, like how Danny just screams under a table. Danny's the whole just time. Danny's not dealing with the situation well. Um, he just plugs his ears. What the fuck was that? I don't know what the fuck that was, but I'm going back out there. Craig, you didn't even get any of the water. The door was fucked up. Damn it, this is so frustrating. There's a lot of swearing in this part. I always think maybe too many. Is, do we swear too much, guys? No. Is there too much profanity? Is it too profane? Is that our fault? Do you ever wonder the moment our partnership ended? It was this. It was this moment. I think we should go softer, Evan. I think we should pack in the profanity. I like We're going to have I children. I like how from this, Franco later says, you always can take your shirt off. <laughs> I know, he's got a nice body. He did it once. Yeah. Uh, that was like a later plot edition of Digging Through the Floor. We wrote the movie... And it wasn't really that big an element that we were running out of water. And then we added the, and then it felt like there wasn't enough like tension in the house. So we added the idea that we had no water. That Emma, first we had the idea that we had very little water. Then that Emma, that, that Danny dumped it all out. Then that Emma stole the remaining drinks. And then that in order to access the water, we had to dig through the floor and get it, which to us just kind of made us laugh. And it's just hard to think of shit for guys to do without leaving a fucking house. So eventually you just think, oh, maybe we can dig through the floor. <laughs> it's a nice activity, and, and it's all able. We can shoot it on our set. And that's the story of why the guys dig through the floor. From Seth and Evan School of Filmmaking. Movie. all love. Just be nicer and follow those commandments. Listen. Do you know the Ten Commandments, Seven? The first one is you, know why? you gotta don't kill people. Don't kill people. And then you shouldn't steal. Don't steal. That's don't, two. Don't fuck off your parents. Don't tell your parents to go respect your elders. Same difference. Uh, Big scenes here. Do we not even do commentary on this scene? What's to be said? Do we assume that even people watching this just want to sit back and enjoy this scene? What? What are you talking about? Now, this was largely... 
I think this was probably more scripted than people think it was, which is complimentary. We take it up until the, like a goddamn pilgrim, and then they yeah. take it home. All this is written. It's nice that I'm in this scene. I think it makes the scene a little better, just that there's a dude standing there witnessing it happen, but it, it was really hard to be in this scene. No, if you watch Seth really closely and think about it, he's clearly, like, trying not to, like, that's all he's doing. I'm he's really trying, trying not, not to, laugh. to laugh. He doesn't move. He keeps his body still because he's clenching his arms and his stomach yeah. in, like, an attempt to not shake. Mm -hmm. Franco lost his voice doing this. Danny made up that line. That always made me laugh. You fucking close your eyes and fucking come wherever you want. I mean, you're getting all worked up over a fucking porno, man. Who this line is the last scripted line of the scene, I believe. <laughs> then they went crazy. Yeah, I am almost laughing there. You're jerking your dick like a goddamn pilgrim. That's right, man. I like to fucking read. You think that's the only thing I jerked off in here? I've been dropping. You're literally thing. looking away right now. <laughs> I'm just trying not to ruin it. You feel bad when you laugh when someone else is being funny. That's what sucks about laughing is you only do it when someone's being really funny, and that's the worst time to do it because that's when you want to be able to use what they're doing, and you ruin it when you laugh. I've always relished my ability to laugh freely on set. I know. You never had to look at the guys. Like you see it happen. Like people look pissed if you ruin it. I laughed hard enough once or twice that I ruined a take. I'm laughing in this scene right there. Yeah, there he shakes. Right now he there, looks I'm away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was impossible to avoid. There, I'm almost laughing. I'm just kind of smiling. I'm gonna fucking shoot it off. You don't have enough bullets, bitch. No fucking jerking off in my house, McBride. I feel like this moment amused you the most, Seth, out of out of the whole movie while we were editing. Yeah, I always liked. I always liked the lines. Too late. I've already walked too. Far. Don't walk away from me, Seth. I've already walked away too much. No, I always like that come joke. Just fucking turn around and come back and help me. Danny. Daniel. If you're just joining us, this is the this is the uh, commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Seth Rogen here with Evan Goldberg. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in Los Angeles, it's, California. Uh, June 7th, 2013. The, the movie, movie is uh, probably a smash hit. Probably a you future You probably have smash enjoyed hit. it several times in theater. Probably won several Oscars by the time you're listening or to this. Or Superman was just that damn yeah. good. Or literally, you haven't even heard of this movie. Maybe someone gave you this DVD thinking you would like it. And you literally, and you thought, what's this? Oh, yeah. I heard this is the end. I remember. I think I heard about that movie. The third time I saw Superman, I yeah. feel like someone right after I, I saw Superman for the first time, I saw a guy coming out of this at the end. If Henry Cavill murders someone in the next week, then we have a real shot. He probably will. He seems like to. a volatile man. That would honestly help. I'd be more likely to see Superman if I knew Superman was a murderer. Well, then here's the sequel. Yeah. It's the most meta thing ever. We kill him and frame him. We kill Henry Cavill. To make our movie do well. Or, or but we, we make a movie about the movie yeah. of us killing him. That's a pretty good idea. We make a documentary following us framing Henry Cavill for murder. That's not a bad idea. This is the end, too. We need a beginning. A new beginning. Uh, this sequence, we told our DP, make it look like the thing. And he said, well, we need a flashlight. And we said, well, we don't have a flashlight. And we, then we said, well, maybe Craig has a flashlight in his pocket. And then Fred, all this Terry Pete stuff, Craig just came up with Terry it. Terry Pete. It's always mystified us. It, there's no reason it's funny. It doesn't get a huge laugh, but the people that laugh laugh hard enough that it was worth keeping in the movie. I'll say this. It doesn't get a huge laugh, but people afterwards, you hear them saying, like, Terry Pete. Yeah. It's a quotable line. We try to have some references. There's Oscar dresses in the background. There's a milk poster. There's his arm from 127 hours. I also think it's worth mentioning, in the drug sequence earlier, we shot a thing where Franco was the Green Goblin throwing tennis balls, and we actually got the mask that he had and the armbands with the razors, and Danny had a shirt with the Spider-Man emblem, and Craig was dressed as Mary Jane, and we did a whole scene, but it just didn't, just didn't click with people. No, really didn't. Good. The two heroes over here breaking through the floor. We did break hey, through the all. floor. And you guys would have done the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, man, that fucking hurts. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't shirt again. I think I did. Coming up here, we got we got the Danny wasting the water a second time, and I think it's worth saying that when he gets the, mon the gun in his mouth from Franco, it took us, I believe, like 17 times. 
fuck? That was Something one like of that. the hardest. Uh... Took 17 times to get it. Everyone just kept laughing. It's, it's on the gag reel, I think, like four of the attempts. But it like got to the point where everyone was like, we, we can't do this. We have to move on. And we were just like, fuck no, we are getting this. It was it was the most, maybe, you know what, but Bill Hader on Superbad when he had to say, I'm sorry I blocked your cock. Yeah, he had to That was that. like 28 times. Yeah, he had to do that a lot of times. So this is number two. This wins the silver. When I was young, I used to always compl complain that things weren't fair. If I got, if I didn't get the same thing as my sister, I'd say, that's not fair, Dad. And my dad would always say, fair and equal are not the same. And that was uh, where we got the idea for this scene, is that Danny doesn't think it's fair that everyone is splitting things equally. He thinks things should be more proportional to their uh, actual physical size. So this is a lesson I learned from my father, that fair and equal. And that's why you will same. never be fit. That's why, because I just deserve more. The fatter I am, the more I deserve. <laughs> that's what's nice about that. I like the noise Danny makes here. He just screams like crazy. If you're just joining us, this I was, 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 was going to pull the same thing. <laughs> Audio commentary. Yeah, here, this, this joke. Good. And in theater, no one ever hears him say nerd. Because they're laughing too hard when he goes, that's what I thought. You just talked over nerd. Now they'll never hear nerd. Nerd's not in the movie even. This scene, for some reason, we shot, everyone acted way crazier than they normally act. Yeah, the like extended the, version's also on the DVD. Craig started talking about vinegar juice, and Jonah just, talks about how Danny's a bumblebee that stings you once and dies. They all went bonkers. Everyone just had a, was in a weird mood this day, and Frank goes, oh, God's to go, go. That, I don't know where the fuck he got that or why he did that, but it makes me laugh every time I see it. <laughs> We shot the whole intervention. We actually filmed us like sitting him down and explaining that we, he has to leave, and then kind of defeated the whole purpose of the last scene. And though. then we realized that you know you can just cut in here. That's what you call a waste of time. Seth and Evan School of Filmmaking, mega movies. <laughs> we should open an audio school of filmmaking. I think maybe we'll start with Green Hornet Live Place. Exactly. <laughs> oh no, hello. We'll do tutorials online. Well, well, we can just open a back studio at the Lee Strasberg Acting Studios. We'll be the new, uh, who's the guy that gives the tips on Final Draft? Sid? Sid Myers? I can't remember. Doesn't matter. Sid Field. Yes, Sid Field. We'll be the new Sid Field. <laughs> Finally. Thank God. Thank God that joke was able to come to fruition. Tears from the tip of my penis. This was a great run by Danny. He improvised most of that I'll stuff. I'll never forget Kyle and Ario, the EPs, came up and were like, it says crying and coming and coming and crying, but we really think it should be coming, crying, 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 coming. <laughs> and I was just like, guys, I don't, I don't uh, know. If this is I don't really know how to give that note. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I think Jonah might have come up with the come for help joke. I, I don't remember. I, but it's the, such a good joke. The guys I think we would should take credit. The guys would pitch each other jokes, which was nice. That doesn't always happen on movies. <laughs> no, usually they hold them. They hold them, keep them for themselves. This joke plays well in the theater. It's fun how everyone knows exactly what's going to happen, but they really think he's going to uh, blow everyone's brains out. Yeah, this is like a long-term joke. This gun, and it paid off pretty well. Thank God. It took us a little while to edit it in the exact right way well, that it really. I remember played. when when Franco had the gun in the inventory scene, and he was about to walk away with it. I said. How about you never let go of the gun for the rest of the movie? And he was like, great idea. And yeah. he held on to the gun. And he, if you watch, he's never not holding the gun. Except until right after now. this moment, he doesn't hold it yeah. anymore. Because he's made his mistake. Yeah, he always has it. I would never do that as an actor. That's such a commitment. What, keeping your props? Yeah, we got prop. You got to keep the whole time. Put it down. Play with it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, you just get a, a lanyard on your hip. A lanyard. You've never made a goddamn mistake before. Franco, you're some pretentious fucking nerd. Fuck you. Joke. This part always makes me laugh. Just because there's no context. It's just Jonah's reaction to being called a cunt is so funny. He kept calling him a sassy little bitch, which made me laugh also. You are, you're, you're extra sassy for some reason. Jonah, anytime Danny said his name, would start laughing. Jonah? Hey, Jonah. Jonah just couldn't even deal with that. It was pretty fucking funny to well, watch. Jonah had never acted with Danny, right? So he had a he had a bit of difficulty keeping it together because Danny really just made him laugh. Oh my ankle! Something's happened. 
months ago Oof. in the Four Seasons, I saw you. What is happening you to me? me? You got restless leg syndrome. Do I? You ain't gonna make it through this audio commentary. I got RLS? Is it R? This is restless? It's not W. That'd be Wrestle's leg syndrome. I think I have it sometimes. My legs get antsy as fuck. Yeah. Who do you think are restless, sir? How do you how do you test it? I'm the one who fidgets all the time. You're not very restless. I'm pretty fidgety, I think. Well, you're wrong. I'm fidgety. Fuck you, Evan. Fuck you. <laughs> Remember that thing you and Aziz do an observe and report? Yeah. That was a funny fuck you exchange. That's true. Should we, we, we could get in some commentary for some of our other movies while we're in here. Is there any other facts? Wait, wait, I like this punch. I like stuff? this punch. Let it happen. Okay, I'll just let it happen. I'm going to add a sound effect. This is what I wanted it to sound like when it happens in the movie. Boing! <laughs> we should just add the, all the sound effects that we actually wanted. For Harumph. This Harumph. <laughs> This prayer was largely improvised uh, by Jonah. We asked him to say from Moneyball. I, I can't remember, actually. I think we did. It doesn't matter. Why be propri Why are we so proprietary over these jokes, Evan? Who cares who came up with them? Because the Writers Guild pays you based on jokes per minute in film. That's you, what most few people, people know that. You get paid by... They have a way of measuring laughter in Hollywood called lules. The more lules your movie generates, <laughs> the more money you get. It's roughly three dollars per lule. Yeah, so though Pineapple Express yeah. made less money than Superbad at a higher lule, a higher lule average, yeah, our lules were through the roof. <laughs> so we really cleaned up on that. But it's a Scientology thing if you don't know yes, about it. Look it's it all up. All deeply rooted in Scientologist beliefs. <laughs> lules, a space god. It's a whole thing. Yeah, but uh, this movie, you know, the more lules are, that are credited to me and Evan, uh, the more money we get. Hashtag laughs. The other thing is that's that, obviously uh, that penis that you saw. We really amped it up and gave it like some shine and veininess, so that it would, you know, hopefully get rejected by the MPA, so they would reduce our rating, and we would just or reduce, you know, we would just re pull it back a bit. It was a trick we learned from uh, Team America. Apparently, the sex scene they went way too far. And they just let us use the version that we thought was way too far. So yeah, we got away with that big Vandy dick. Something um, not that chill happened last night. Yo, so I just drank my own pee for the first time, and it ain't bad. I never thought to do it. I always thought, you know, pee stink, whatever. But Now, this scene of me pissing in my f mouth. This was the last shot of the entire movie. Literally, yeah. as when this bottle of piss ran out. I'm just holding, like, a ketchup, literally, like, one of those, like, squeezable ketchup bottles filled with, like, yellow Gatorade right below what the What you camera don't know line. is we filled it with real piss. <laughs> oh. Oh. Thank you. It's a good thing you I thought it. Thing. That's why I became so sexually aroused when it hit my face. I didn't understand why. Yes. I'm like, I'm not, I don't get turned down by Gatorade getting sprayed in my mouth, but I do get turned down by piss. Why is this doing this to me? That was one of those rare, rare moments where I was directing you without you knowing it. With it piss. You did. You used piss to direct me. Here, Jonah. Jonah played this well. It's yep. kind of post 
demon rape uh, stupor, I guess you would call it. And then you reveal, the scratch on his arm is real. It wasn't just a dream. Thank you. Thank you. Bum, 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 bum. What we tried to do here emotionally is show that it's really just between me and Jay in this showdown. <laughs> it's very subtle filmmaking, you they call that. That's how, if anyone asks what our style is, we should say subtle. It's subtle, with some panache. We have a subtle filmmaking style. <laughs> Subtle yet filled with panache. Jay's got crazy hair. <laughs> you all, well, you all have crazy Jay, hair. In Jay this. particularly is Jay, pretty crazy. Well, all, we all look like wild men. Franco looks pretty bananas. We're supposed to be surviving the fucking apocalypse. Like the width of Jay's sideburns compared to the width of yours. Mm -hmm. People are just different, I guess, you know? You know, I think that's the moral of this movie is that people are just different. This movie is the same moral as the movie Volcano. And Dante's Peak. It's that we're all the same color while covered in ash. And that's gray. Holy shit, I forgot about that moment. Oh, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> you mean you forgot about the point of the whole movie? <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm not too up to snuff on Volcano. Uh, Special apology to Neil Moritz. All these shots of the house are completely computer generated. Um, or C. That's my favorite shot in the movie. G. I find Seth's patheticness in that shot. Very humorous. I'm sitting on this chair that was at one point kind of a plot like that. Franco has this ridiculous chair of Wendell Taggart lounge plank. We cut it out though for the most part. That's the only time it should be used. I called dibs on that chair. Yeah, what the fuck happened to all that furniture we we're supposed to get? We'll find out. Or we won't. That's or Hollywood, we won't. man. We're putting you on blast, Chris Spellman. Uh, this shot you're about to see was for some reason the hardest visual effects shot of literally the entire movie. And it's not that good even. I In still am end. not happy with no, it. No, 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 no. For some reason. They, it wasn't the building itself. They couldn't get the, the, pan, the landing. It didn't the land. Camera just it doesn't didn't... feel like a camera fucking landing. It kept like snapping into place. We're like, make it feel real like a camera guy's turning. And it will haunt us till the day we die. And that's why Hello? me and the last film we will ever make are going to dock <laughs> iodine. <laughs> We're going to dock poison into each other's penises. <laughs> Hemlock. <laughs> Hemlock dock. We're going to hem dock. <laughs> That's how Socrates died. It, right? I will say, <laughs> I couldn't do it, so maybe... If That's you how Cockerties died. If you kill me and then just dock yourself to death on me, that yeah. would be funny. That, would, that be would be a good out joke. After you're dead? It's like, we actually do one gay thing, and it kills us. <laughs> Are we hemlock doc? The weirdest thing is I'm having deja vu about this moment right now. <laughs> We've done this before. <sighs> so we always thought it'd be funny if Jonah got raped by a devil and then possessed. And, this and is, then years later we made this then movie. Years later we <laughs> found ourselves writing This is the End and thought, hey, this could be a good time to use that joke. <laughs> um, it, uh, oh, in, in this scene where Jay and Craig get chased by the demon dog, we had a whole thing where Craig hides under the kitchen counter and eats Milky Ways. Yeah. That was funny. There's a lot of visual effects in this sequence. Jonah, um... Jonah, stay with me! Like, none of, like, he's not wearing much actual makeup at all. Everything done to his skin color and skin pigment and his eyes and all the veins, pretty much all that's done in post. So actors uh, actors watching this should take note that you never should wear makeup. They anytime can, they they're can like, fix it later. Yeah, anytime they're like, you need to sit in this makeup chair for three hours, you can be like, nope, I heard the audio commentary for this at the end, and I don't need to fucking do that, Mr. Director Unless man. you're less famous than Jonah. Yeah, if you're less famous than Jonah, then you then you do need to because it's too expensive to do it to that's you. That's the big. That's why you got to chase that golden dream of getting big like Jonah. That little glob coming out of Franco's mouth is no, computer no. generated. It was. So we enhanced it with computers. Then we went back. No, that's yeah. computer generated. It's not generated. It's not pronounced generated. They generated that. They computer generated. They didn't generate that. I'm pretty sure that's generated. That's an insult to his acting. <laughs> he made it perfect because he's good. I think that's computer generated. <laughs> He's not generated. Uh, we uh, made up a bunch of biblical stuff, which is fun to do. It's fun rewriting the Bible. It's like written pretty well, but you realize if you punch it up a bit and kind of take out some they lines just don't have here as many and there, adjectives back yeah, there. and you, then there's some run-on sentences. Uh, once, yeah, once you abridge it, the Bible actually comes out pretty nicely. <laughs> and 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 here, you don't have to sleep in a. Friggin' tent under a dick. So in this scene coming up, you see a giant horned dog-like creature 
uh, chasing Jay and Craig. Now, directors do this thing <laughs> where they want everything to be real or, as they say in the biz, in camera. I think by the time this movie comes out, it'll be more like directors used to do this thing. Yeah. And that means that, like, instead of having a computer-generated creature, you want an in-camera creature, something you actually film. Or yeah, what, what, what you tell suit. yourself is it's real. Real it's real. real. You and can't be cool. real. And people say, you know, it's hard to do that now. And you say, oh, I'm good. I can light it and shoot it in such a way that even though it's a guy in a suit, essentially, it'll be very scary and uh, dramatic. And then you find yourself filming a guy in a suit, a guy who's literally probably smaller than Jay and Craig. <laughs> a guy that Craig could literally pound the living shit out of if he really wanted to. And, like, we designed and, a cool demon costume for him, but... Yeah, but it just wasn't working, and we found ourselves... We were like, we're those guys. We're those guys who said they could do it, and now we can't do it. And so we replaced... And the suit was good. I, I think it, it was like... We just didn't do it, and so we replaced the guy in the suit with a giant demon dog creature, and it worked a lot better. And this is the moment where we plug Modus. Yes, because they built this demon dog creature really fast as like a last minute kind of replacement for this other thing, and it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And it looks really good. Yeah, and Modus uh, did most of the VFX in the movie. They designed it well, and this whole thing, I mean, all of that was like, I mean... But, like, this shot we actually filmed. No, actually, we had the thing running around. Back yeah, we had, yeah, I mean, we had him running around. Yeah, I mean, all we had Craig the, hiding with a bat he could easily kill it he with. He could easily beat the demon to death with <laughs> if it was the other demon. Um, In my head, it was super strong. Stop, stop him. That's the silliest moment in the whole movie to me. Snap zoom. The snap zoom and the... Now... In this part, Jonah laughed very hard. Yeah, the joke, uh, are you a big B or a small C, made him laugh harder than I've ever seen him laugh in my life, and we had to wait a few minutes for him to calm down to film again. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, was very, very, very funny. For some reason, that thing was CG, I remember, and I don't understand. I'll never understand why they had to be a CG coat hanger. No, they threw it at me. It got all flimsy. Really? Yeah. This whole hallway isn't there. That's just a wall behind Jay, and we extended it with the visual arts. <laughs> the visual arts. Notice the, the teats on the bottom of the dog monster? It's a mother. Which means where's its baby? Dun 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 in the sequel. Dun 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 dun. This part really, really gets me good. I like Franco's face right here. Watch his face. Watch it. This is one of the. This is like a Scooby Doo type joke. You're literally hiding in a closet together. Yeah, and we realized like this whole breathing joke actually um, came from uh, came from just the fact that I breathe super duper duper fucking loud. Um, and we realized that if I was hiding in a closet, I probably would breathe actually too loud uh, for us to hide effectively. So we came up with this idea that I don't know where to breathe from. Um, this part's kind of scary. Jonah's scary in this part. Yeah, Jonah's terrifying. His hands have no real makeup on it. That always blows my yeah, mind. Yeah, all that's done with uh, what we call commuter gemurgated mefex, which this is... This is a great stunt. Yes. I feel like these guys really sold this. These two dudes just fell down a fucking flight of stairs. Uh, there's not a whole lot of ways to fake that one. I sometimes picture that they're yeah. like, yeah, it was no problem. And then they go home and cry <laughs> yeah, for they like several do. hours. Uh, uh, uh. That's what you call a fake scare. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm a fucking demon A demon? What the fuck happened to you guys? That! It's Jonah! He's, he's possessed! He's crazy! Bonk. That sound took us a little while to find. Me and Evan always pictured a particularly pungy sound. It worked well. Is now when we call, give props to Michael Babcock, our uh, overall sound guy, sound designer. Sound, they do not like being called sound guy. It's <laughs> sound, a sound designer, engineer. Sound engineer. No, that's something different. The I think. Grand Wizard of Sound. The Grand Master of Sound. The, the Commodore. El the Elvis. The Commodore of Sound. The Chancellor of Sound. Well, it's Babcock. Michael Babcock. Everybody. You made this movie sound good. <laughs> the Rebel Book of 
Station. This was fun. Fuck. Well, I got you. Don't worry about it. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> My microphone. This is, this is where they finally deal with the actual topic of the film. Which is that it's the apocalypse. This scene was a little, like, edgy because we, you know, there's not a lot of scenes where the characters are really discussing, like, religious stuff and whether or not they believe in God or don't believe in God um, and what they think. And this was the one scene, like, we kind of resisted writing for a little while because we were like, are we really just going to talk about it? And then we just started talking about it. And it was really funny because it felt real, I think. Um, this scene was marred by the fact that for weeks I had to be covered in black fucking slime uh, that Jonah vomited yeah, all over me. It was me. really funny. And tell them what, it, how, did, how did they make it shine, Seth? It was KY jelly mixed with black paint. And they literally had buckets full of it, giant buckets of it. And before the take, I would stand there and two and they'd loop people you up. would like literally get giant paintbrushes and paint KY jelly all over my body. And it would kind of dry and crust up and flake. And now without at least a little KY on you, you're not happy. No. The, the upside is it made it much easier for me to have it to butt fuck regularly. <laughs> it lubes. It's it lubes well. It's, it's a lubricant. Yeah. I wonder what happened to spermicidal lubricant. That used to be a big thing when I was in high school and in university. Yeah. They just let, maybe it just seemed too aggressive or maybe it never worked. It's just, a, it's not a sexy word. Let's get spermicidal, baby. He's a spermicidal baby. maniac. What the fuck? Are He's committed mass spermicide. Mass spermicide. Have you heard in Darfur there's a mass spermicide? <laughs> that joke's too far. <laughs> that's too far? I don't think it is. I think we're I think we're treading on edgy ground, but I don't think that's too far. <laughs> First eyeball was an accident, but then it like fuck it, and I went for the second one. Oh, it was fucked up. Uh, we improvised a lot of terrible things. Speaking of too far, we uh, <laughs> we had a lot of jokes that we improvised um, about like bad things we had done, um, and maybe that's why we're here. And some of them are actually like so offensive and bad that. I felt really even bad saying some of them, but I said them to kind of coax the other guys to say bad stuff. Uh, and then I was actually, like, convinced that we should test some of the stuff that we tried. And it was actually, like, one of the more, like, humiliating moments I've ever had. Because, like, some of the jokes were so offensive and just died. Like, no one laughed at them. And there's one joke in particular that we will not say that I convinced Seth we should leave in because I knew it would die. Why did you do that to me? I just wanted to see it happen. That's not very nice. <laughs> Well, that's why I'm leaving. There was a 5% that's chance. That's why if you watch any of the EPK footage on this DVD, Evan looks like a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to... He's wearing a shirt with a pug riding a horse I or don't something. Look, I don't look very good. It looks like he has a funny body that's being like at, like operated I, by I, puppeteers I, off stage. I, I struck a weird posture. <laughs> I sat in my chair wrong. And, and I, wore, I wore a shirt that usually makes people smile, but it kind and of I was, backfired I, on me. I was open to reshooting some of that EPK footage, but now I'm not going to because you mocked You're me. literally <laughs> taking money out of your own bank account. We I'm look so to. unprofessional. I don't care. No one's going to want to hire those two guys. It's too late. It's in. You're willing to ruin your own career I just am. for a just laugh? I'm going to bring you down with me. Demon? Yes. Um, this was funny to shoot. Jonah improvised a lot of this stuff. We had originally wrote it that, like, he's saying dirty stuff. You will suck cocks in hell and all this shit. And then we realized that, like, we, we rewatched The Exorcist and realized, like, even the crazy shit we wrote wasn't as crazy as the shit that uh, Linda Blair says in The Exorcist. And she's, like, a 10-year-old girl. So it was way more shocking than anything we had. So... Jonah actually came up with the idea to go in this direction with it, where he's just kind of talking to Jay almost like a completely regular asshole would be talking to him. Did, and, in uh, The Exorcist, did they have her say words that sound like those words and re-record it, or did they just have a 10-year-old girl say no, that? No, I think she actually said it. Well, then that's terrible of everybody involved in that movie to do. That's super <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> it's true. We did some... Not to 10-year-olds, yo. No, 10-year-olds, dude. Yeah, and uh, all this was, it was, Jonah was really funny. Because, yeah, yeah, all, he, all the improv, all Jonah's lines, I think, or most of them at least, are yeah. improv. It was fun making this bed rig. We just actually made it wobble up and down. And Jonah rode it around. It was pretty fun. We made some tongs and a spatula into a crucifix. That was the big moment where Jason Stone, Ariel Shafir, and Kyle Hunter, our executive producers, insisted that Seth... Yank him down, and we fought it hard. 
And feel, they were right. They were right. All of this, Jonah improvised, let him fight. And the, that gets huge laughs. And it was very funny of Jonah to interject in that regard. This is, this is where Seth and Jay get emotional as characters. And this was fucking kind of just lame until, and, and then when Jonah started doing this, it made it really funny. So thank God. Thanks, Jonah. Thanks, Jonah. This is a visual effect. The candle, yeah, the candle landed in front of the sheet, and the wizards who worked with us and the flame went out. That, that flame on the candle itself was added. Craig always makes me laugh here. I was sucked a dick for half a cracker. I didn't want to suck it. That's what I'm saying. It always makes me laugh that Franco and Craig are literally like about to engage in a giant argument as to what he meant about sucking a dick for a cracker, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what is interrupted uh, by Jonah being on fire. Pretty fucked up how much food Franco kept for himself. He has a lot of food in there. Like, I'd have kept a bit of food if I was him. It was his food, but... Really? Not y that much. You would have. I wouldn't have lied. I'd be like, I get a bit more. It's my fucking food, guys. It's my fucking house. You don't like it? Leave the house and get no food. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend I'm not keeping more food. This dude, we lit on fire like 20 nine, times. Nine, nine times. <laughs> nine I, times I, over the course of a day. I believe he set a record, actually. Like, this fire isn't fake. We lit a fucking guy on fire, and he ran around. He jumped off that yeah. thing. And those are all the real actors. He did all that shit. I mean, it was crazy. Like, and we just kept doing We filmed all this stuff. A little bit day. of that fire is fake on the couch. A, a little, little, bit. little bit of the couch fire is fake. But uh, for the most part, the fire is real. That's and, all real. And it was, like, really, um, it was amazing what this guy did. Uh... I couldn't believe it. I felt bad. You feel bad making people do stunts for a comedy. Yeah, like if it was Schindler's List, we'd be like, yeah. this is gonna mean a lot when people This will be it. meaningful. For this, you're like, it's a fucking giant dick joke and we're putting people in danger, but it's okay. You gotta do what you gotta do. We're out in the open now. That shot of the house collapsing is, uh, it's okay. It's not our best visual effects shot, I'm gonna say right now. It's but this shot, on the other hand, is awesome. We had to have a best and we had to have a worst. These demons look very good, I think, in the end. Um, they are scary. And, uh... Well, you don't want to get confronted with that thing. You don't want to get confronted with that. Oh, this song. Down, 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 down. This is Craig's badass moment. We told our composer to try to make it sound like a cool think, moment from an 80s action yeah, movie. Think Maybe, Lethal Weapon, perhaps. Think Lethal Weapon or, or perhaps a Van Damme film or something of that Sudden nature. Sudden death. And uh, he did a very good job, I think. is isn't for me. It's for you guys. Craig, you don't have to do the... Uh, all, everything behind Craig is fake. All that background is fake. Like, so we were standing in the parking lot of our soundstage when we filmed this stuff. But uh, the, uh, the, vimo, the visual effects wizards that did our computer-generated effects, uh, they made it look like a real place. It was amazing. That house isn't there. All that stuff's fake. It's crazy. Yeah, literally only the doorway was there. Yeah. None of that stuff behind Craig. Yeah, it's amazing what they can do these days for not much money if you find the right people. And that is another lesson from Seth and Evan School of Filmmaking. Seth and Evan. Make movies. Make movies. Now, if you listen closely, they're singing, Take off your panties. They really are. Take off your panties. And when he goes up, they go, Take your panties off. We actually had a choir do that. <laughs> they seemed into it. <laughs> that joke makes me laugh every time. Take your panties off. We used to play Canned Heat and they kind of forgot about their worries and just grooved along, kind of jamming out in this scene for like a good minute. And then we realized that was boring. And we just wanted to make it go faster. We wanted to kind of, I don't want to say we wanted to rush through to the ending, but we knew we were on the home stretch and we, you kind of don't want to dilly daddle. You want to keep it rolling at this point, keep it moving. We filmed this in a street in New Orleans um, that we turned down into the apocalypse. We had tons of cars that we lit on fire, and they made these giant freeway signs that were awesome looking. Um, and it really looked like a fucking pretty nasty, hellish landscape. Um, 
And uh, I'm very pleased with how this looked in the end, aren't you, Evan? Yeah, you know. Not so much it's here? A, no, this part's great. That shot is, of course, a ripoff of many shots in many movies. There's a million shots where a car crash happens and you're inside the car with the guys. I think maybe the Bourne Ultimatum was one of the first ones to Adaptation. Do it. Adaptation does it pretty well. We thought, hey, you know, why not throw our names in the hat? <laughs> This is the Deftones. We used to listen to a lot of Deftones. Loved the Deftones. That's, that's our, Ricky Maybe that's right there. Ricky Maybe. That's our cinematographer who's holding me with the kitty cat paint on his face. And his brothers beside him with the eye patch. That's Beatro and J Tro. Or Brandon Trost and Jason Trost. Or just the Tro Bros. We thought it'd be good if Danny had some fresh air Jordans. Here's where we should say Danny Glicker. Yeah, that was our idea. That was, that was the Glicks idea. He's an awesome guy. Danny Glicker could be considered. A modern day genius. Yes, yeah, that's our cinematographer Brandon Trost in the uh, with the with the muscles painted on his body and the kitty cat nose. Now, a lot of people are probably wondering how the fuck do we get Channing Tatum to do this? First, we should say that's always Channing Tatum. Like that's Channing like, Tatum. Like right now, touching like, Danny's that's dick. That's Channing. Like it's never another guy with a mask on, and then like it's only Channing when he pulls the mask off. Like it's always Channing. Yeah, like two full nights of Channing yeah. scampering around. And we just, uh, I emailed him. We weren't gonna have a famous person play the sexual gimp because we just assumed no one would. And then I, e and then we're like, maybe Channing will do it. And I emailed him, literally saying, you know, there's a seed. Where Ch D Danny is a cannibal king and he has a gimp on the end of a leash who he talks about butt fucking and then it, we thought it'd be funny if he pulls off the mask and you reveal that it's you and I'm like I know this sounds crazy and I'm like this is it like that's like the whole role basically and I got an email back like 20 minutes later being like I'm in I'll do it where do you need me to be and when and, and he like fuck he got cuts and scrapes like if you see it. some of the makeup it's mostly not makeup on his yeah, body no, he's like he's like got this. a scrape he's bleeding there is yeah. dirt all over him oh yeah it's a uh, pretty spectacular we had a good shot where he flashed his taint at the screen at one point we did a shot over his butt cheeks but it was a bit much people we we actually were probably the first people to put two more much of Channing Tatum's body in a movie. We hit the limit. We found the wall. And the wall is basically when you can see inside his butthole. <laughs> That's the wall. The butthole wall. Oh. Ooh, you felt that one, yeah. Evan. That was a fake brick, you know. I let the movies, you know, take me where they <laughs> need you. Know, take you where they want you to be. I'm just, I'm not the director. I'm just a guy watching the bloody movie and going with the hits. Yeah, that's Brandon's brother with the eye patch, Jason. Uh, this is a lot of visual effects going on here. Franco standing on a box in that Franco shot. fought us on this. He didn't think he should die. He really didn't want to die, and we said, you have to die. And then he actually came up with this idea, that he starts getting sucked up, and then he's being petty, and so it doesn't. It doesn't keep him. That joke's literally from like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. The way the light turns off. Yeah, <laughs> it turns off. He looks around and then falls, which is so stupid. But... Um, now here's the biggest moment that didn't make the movie. Yeah, we had it that Channing cut Franco's foot off. And you see every moment. And Channing we're pulls his mask off and then eats Franco's like bloody stump. As, as blood sprays as blood all, is, over like, spraying all over his face. Like screaming like a hyena. Yeah, and audiences just don't want to see Channing Tatum do that. That's what we learned also. They want to see him do almost everything except eat James Franco's foot. I don't foot. think that's on the DVD. That should be on the DVD. <laughs> the Channing the stump. The full Channing stump. Effect. I always wish this chase was a little more exciting. We didn't really have much time to film it, though. This is a symptom of our budget, I would say, more than anything. I feel like before we ramp into the end, we should mention the one person we haven't, which is James Weaver, our James fellow Weaver, producer, our producer, who made all this happen with his hard work. He did. Did he? I think he helped. <laughs> I think he did, too. Not like a lot. <laughs> but like, he was there. He was around the whole time. Uh, and we should thank the studio for helping make this the biggest comedy of all time. It's crazy how they doubled Superman's marketing budget I know, the last it's minute. It's amazing. And, and just went all in like and that. And it's crazy how no one's won every Oscar before. Yeah, but thanks to Sony yeah. and their relentless spending. Yeah. And it's cool how we were like, we won Best Foreign Film even, because we're not even a foreign film. We're they, Canadian. I know, they figured out a way to do that. It was cool. Yeah, so big ups to Sony for all the money they're just hurling at this. Let's talk Demon Dick for a couple minutes now. If you're just joining us, this is Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. And we're talking uh, Demon Dick we're talking on June Demon 7th Dick, here. June 7th, 2013. You know, getting on our knees and talking about the dick.
So this demon didn't have a dick at first. Obviously, all this is computer generated. We yeah. couldn't afford to for, find a real demon. For the last time but, in our lives, we had the thought maybe we shouldn't do a dick joke. Maybe we here. shouldn't do a dick. We thought we thought maybe we're better than that. Maybe we thought maybe our ending is so exciting and good. We don't need a giant dick joke in order to make it really sing, as it were. And then what we saw was a giant fleshy mound where a giant joke could be flopping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and we, we made a mistake at first. We tried a small dick. We thought maybe, like, people are going to expect a big dick. Yeah, maybe the joke is it Let's has to go like with, a, like, a really jiggly like, small like dick a with, a little, like, a big bush. That's like a little normal dick. And then that just didn't read that well because it's lit. It's, it's, well, because the humor is the flop. Yeah, the flopping dick. So then, it wasn't until later that we decided to give it this giant dick. And and even still, like, it wasn't until later that we realized we could cut the dick off and have it crush uh, Skyscraper. Um, so that was really exciting to us. We, we, got a, we got a shout out to Paul Linden. Our visual big, effects supervisor. Big help. <laughs> big help on that dick. He really brought that dick to life. He, he brought that dick to life. This was all shot on like a green screen essentially from when my feet leave the ground on. This is just like me and Jay hanging from wires. Um, and uh, everything else was done in post, all this stuff. It was hard to give it a sense of scale. We found clouds helped a lot. The more clouds it was pushing through, and the more you could kind of see it amongst the clouds and moving through the clouds was helpful. But, and, and seeing the buildings like that in the streets was helpful. But it was, giving it its like massive size wasn't easy. Shots like this kind of helped. And we found putting buildings in the foreground was helpful um, to kind of help scale it. But yeah, it, it, this wasn't easy, this whole sequence. Yeah, the whole going up and going down with the beam. Yeah, that was hard. But to none really... of it matters because this song. The fact that we have this song is fucking insane. And every time it comes on, I think, I can't believe they let us use this song. Yeah, to the people of the Whitney Houston estate, we thank God you. God bless you. Hats off to you. You have a great sense of humor. Yeah, it's really amazing. Or you just love money. I think they but... got the humor. <laughs> Either way, we thank you. Uh, we think some people are thinking Seth's going to die right now. He's gonna get eaten. As Whitney Houston comes in, we cut a giant demon's dick off. And save and me. And its balls explode. Its balls Don't explode. Forget that its balls literally it flops explode. to the ground and crushes a building. As one does. As one does. We kept saying floppier to the visual effects house. Floppier. Yeah, be like, but the penis would not flop like this. It would not flop, flop like, like this. this. It would not flop like this. Now, this is our best shot from anything we've ever Here done. Here again, we say floppier. There's some smoke coming off of it. That's our opus right there, that shot. It's true. That's what they played when we won the Oscars, that shot. Yeah, when they yeah, when they yeah. invented an Oscar for us. Now, okay, we'll be honest. Originally, when we wrote the movie, there was a heaven sequence. And then we thought it was stupid, so we cut the heaven sequence. Because we thought we just didn't execute it very well. And the movie ended literally with this shot that you're looking at right now. This was the last shot of the movie. Fade to white, the end. That didn't work very well. Literally every audience was like, Where's why heaven? the hell didn't you show why heaven? Why didn't you show heaven? You couldn't think of a heaven? You, shot a, you thought of so much crazy shit? Would and it we, fucking kill you to think of a heaven? And then with our Sony rainbow. <laughs> yes, we decided that we needed to think of a heaven. And so we thought, you know, it, this is what we thought of, basically. You know, that... Our high point in the movie, we, you know, first there's a lot of debate. Who's in heaven? Are all the guys in heaven? But we couldn't, as you know, dumb as the logic of the movie is, we couldn't like go against our logic. So it had to be like only the people who went to heaven are in heaven. So that's only Craig basically. And then we thought like, what happens in heaven? And we thought, yeah, and we always said, oh, they could smoke weed with Bob Marley, play guitar with Jimi Hendrix, dance with Michael Jackson, get a BJ from Marilyn. But Monroe. then you're just like, it's all like impersonators, and you've kind of seen that joke in a million things before. So we thought like this wish fulfillment thing was funny where like anything they wish will happen and then we thought what would they wish for and the Backstreet Boys thing independently always played well and again it's kind of like Seth and Jay's like emotional high point in the movie yeah, and it's I remember like where was, we're getting along we were, the best and like we're the happiest and I was trying to figure it out one night with my wife and she jokingly when we were watching the start of the movie said well wouldn't that be cool if it was the Backstreet Boys and then I came to work and I remember I told you and just forgot yeah and then, and then later on, it just came back. It just came back. What if it was the Backstreet Boys? It came back like the Backstreet Boys came back. Are you giving Lisa credit for thinking of this? 
She did. I don't think that's true. She did, man. I'm taking credit away from you your can't. wife. I'm saying she that took that's it. bullshit. She took it. I think you're just trying to do this to try to get more, more good, sex good out of my wife. from her. No. I remember I think the it was moment. My idea. I think it was my wife's idea. How about they came up with it together? How about our wives came up with it together? This is our wives' right. idea. The our, whole heaven sequence our is our wives', wives came idea. Up with this stuff. <laughs> my wife came up with more of it. <laughs> but my wife came up with the good stuff. <laughs> um, we shot this whole thing on a green screen, which was kind of fun, actually. I kind of enjoyed shooting all on a green screen. Uh, and now the fucking Backstreet Boys came out. I can't believe we got all of them. Yeah. I knew it was a good idea because Jay Baruchel literally hates everything. You tell him anything, and he's like, "Really? That's what we're doing?" And yeah, then I remember and he, literally, you're like, "I like the blues. Oh, I don't like the I don't blues. like the blues. Have you he heard doesn't the, like the Beatles. You know the Beatles? Oh, I don't like the Beatles. Really?" And then I remember we told him like, "We have to reshoot this thing. We want to shoot a new ending." And we got the Backstreet Boys, and I was ready for him to be like, "Oh, Backstreet Boys, come on!" And he literally went, "Really?" And we were like, yeah. And then he went, all of them? And I was like, yeah, we got all of them. And he was like, oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. And that's when I was like, this, there's Zelda again. There's Zelda. Aja made it to heaven. And me and, and me and my wife are in the background of that Zelda shot. And then that's when we realized this Backstreet Boys might be a good idea and that the people might enjoy it. Because if Jay likes it and Jay hates everything, then uh, maybe your average audience member will like it too. What's and, amazing and, is we only had like 100 people when we shot this. And it looks like there's like 10,000 people there. Um, all this stuff is fake. That was Evan and his wife dancing. Evan looked like Moses. Uh, the Backstreet Boys, they just, they brought the thunder. They, really, have they, really, they really did it. They're the real heroes yeah. here. So I guess our final thanks is to, to the, the motherfucking Backstreet, Backstreet Boys. Backstreet is back. They never really left. Um, oh, one more thing. So see how all these title cards are different colors? Yeah. We had to tell them three times to do that. Yeah. Because they thought we were joking because we're it was big, so like, stupid. We're big, like, Stanley Kubrick fans. And then, like, uh, he did that in, like, Eyes Wide Shut. He does that. I mean, it's very simple font. And they just use different bright colors. And we were like, let's try that. And, and I'll never forget. They were like, <laughs> And they literally was like a <laughs> chuckle. Yeah. And they were like, we were like, okay. And then next, and then it, we, yeah, we had to keep telling them. So it just makes it fun because you're like, green. Oh, like, what color is going to be next? Oh, my God. James Franco's blue. What does that mean? I wonder mean? why they chose pink why for Jonah. Why did they show pink That's for Jonah? Is there a choice. subtext? That's Rogan's red. red. Oh. What an egomaniac. He picked the brightest color. Anyway, if you're just joining us, this is the end of the This is the End commentary. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a lot. Your support is what helped us win the Oscars, the Grammys, and all the all other this awards stuff. that we've we, won. We won a Pulitzer for this film. And again, thanks to Sony for just pissing money away like it was nothing on the on the Oscar campaign. Yeah, just spending all that money on our four-year consideration campaign. I think, uh, is that it? Yeah, I'm going to go see Fast 6 right now. I might join you, Evan. I might join you. We should see if Neil will come. <laughs> and do a commentary for us. So I guess... I guess that's the end of the commentary. Okay, see you guys. Thank you. Live strong. <laughs>